So today we're gonna to be checking out filming locations for Real Genius. Now I've always been a big fan of this movie. I think it might be one of my favorite Val Kilmer movies, if not my favorite Val Kilmer movie of all time. So get ready because today we're checking out filming locations for the 1985 comedy, Real Genius. Let's go see what we can find. Towards the beginning of the movie, we see Chris Knight, who's played by Val Kilmer, walking down some steps in front of a building while another man in a suit tells him that once he graduates, he has a job waiting for him there at the lab. That was filmed at General Atomics in San Diego, California. That scene was filmed in front of that round building that you see in the center of the complex. Notice in that scene as they walk away from the building, you can see a number seven above the entrance. And you can see right here in this picture, there's entrance number seven, and these were the stairs that they were walking down. Now, of course, a lot of the movie was filmed on a college campus. It was actually filmed on at least two different college campuses, one of which I'll show you in a little bit, the other one being Occidental College. Now, I actually know a lot about this school. I've talked about this in one of my previous videos. Not only did my wife attend Occidental, but my wife and I actually met here. Now, I didn't attend school here. I used to just hang out here and try and join clubs and fit in. So let's head inside because I know at least a few scenes were filmed here and now we're gonna try and match them up. This building right here in front of me is the back side of Haynes Hall. And this is the area where they hide out waiting to get Kent's car so they can pull a prank on him. And Jordan would have been sitting on those steps right in front of me, waiting for Kent to pull up and park his car in front of that building on the left side. And like I said, Jordan would have been sitting on these steps, reading a book, waiting for Kent to park his car and then head inside. And then once he does, she gives the signal to the guys that are hiding out in these bushes right over here. And once she gives them the all clear, the guys come running out of the bushes and they come down this way and they go to work on Kent's car, which would have been parked right over here. It would have been parked right in front of me where this green BMW is now parked. And of course, what they end up doing is taking his car apart and then reassembling it inside of his dorm room and installing airbags on it, which seems pretty far-fetched, but still hilarious. The other campus that was used is Pomona College, and this building right here is Harwood Court, and it was used as Mitch and Chris's dorm, but you also might recognize it as Eastland School from Facts of Life. And we see the outside of Harwood Court a few times in Real Genius, like when Mitch first gets to school and we see him walking up to the front of the building just before walking to his dorm for the first time. We also see it later in the movie when Chris realizes what's wrong with the laser and he comes running down these steps and then down the sidewalk right here. 
There's also a very similar shot where Mitch comes walking out of that door, down those steps, down this sidewalk, and then he crosses the street and we see this building. Now they did use the inside of Harwood Court for some of the dorm scenes, but you need a code to get in. It's only for students. And there have been a couple of students out here watching me like a hawk, making sure I don't try and get in. I don't know you! <laughs> but I can kind of peek through the window right here and you can see right there, that's where the arcade game was. When Mitch first walks in, there's a guy playing the arcade game and then Mitch walks into that room directly in front of me. And then same room, but on the other side, this is where towards the end of the movie, Kent is sitting on the couch talking to God. And I was able to find some pictures of that room online so we could match it up and see that that is indeed where they filmed it. The other location they used here at Pomona College is this courtyard in front of Mason Hall. And Mason Hall is that building right there on the left and it was used as the exterior of the lab. And we get a shot pretty similar to this one, just as an establishing shot, the first time that we see Mitch go to the lab. And this is the shot we get of these two buildings when Chris makes the laser shoot all across the courtyard, leading everybody to the tanning invitational. You can also see this building in the background, the first time they fire the laser and then they come outside to find that the laser shot right through the tree and through the head of the statue. Now that tree is no longer here. I believe it would have been somewhere where this fountain is and the fountain wouldn't have been here at the time. This sidewalk would have cut all the way through where the fountain is and I believe the tree would have been just on the other side of the sidewalk and then that would tell us that over on that side of the sidewalk, probably right about where that bench is, that's where the statue would have been. And of course, I believe that statue was placed here just for the movie. That's how they were able to, you know, shoot a hole through the head of the statue. This building right in front of me is the theater at the VA hospital in the San Fernando Valley. And this is where they filmed the party scene. Right up there on that section of bricks is where Chris used the lasers to spell out tanning invitational. And then the camera pans down and we see them walking down these steps and through those doors. And it actually looks like those doors haven't been touched since they filmed the movie. I mean, this is crazy. Everything here still looks exactly the same. The brick wall, the color of the doors. You can even still see a no smoking sign above the doors, just like the one that you can see in the movie. There's also a light that can be seen above the door in the movies. That's no longer here, but you can see the wires hanging down from where the light used to be. Now, I do believe that they filmed inside this theater. I believe all those party scenes happened inside this building. But the bad news is this building was condemned and nobody's allowed inside. You can see right over here on the doors, they have steel bars going across them with padlocks. And I was able to find a dirty window on the other side of the building and kind of peek inside. And it's pretty bad in there. All the paints peeling off the walls, the ceiling starting to cave in. And the strange thing is, I wasn't even able to find any pictures of the inside of this building online anywhere. I actually couldn't find any information about this building online. It's almost like this building doesn't exist. I had to physically drive down here and search for this building. But luckily, considering nothing here has changed, we're able to tell that this is definitely where they filmed that scene. After they fire the laser and they see that it's gone through the face of the statue and right through a tree, they run out into the street to see just how far it's gone, and they see that it's gone through the sign of a restaurant called Purgatory, home of the famous Limbo Burger. And that was filmed at the original Barney's Beanery in West Hollywood. That Barney's Beanery sign up there, that would have been the Purgatory sign. And other than the sign being different, pretty much everything else on the building is the same. The awnings are the same. Everything here looks the same, but obviously the sign was changed for the movie. Now they did actually film inside Barney's Beanery for the movie, so let's head inside and see if we can match up that booth. So the scene starts with a couple of people fighting in front of a pool table, and that would be this pool table right here. The camera then pans over to the booth that they're all sitting at, and that would be this booth. And even the colors on the seat are still the same. It also still has the pool tables behind the booth. Everything here looks the same, so cool. This walkway is also the same one that Laszlo comes walking down before sitting at their table and telling them that he figured out what they're using their laser for. 
It's so awesome to see that not much has changed here since 1985. Right now I'm in Santa Clarita. I believe this is the Canyon Country area and I'm talking a little quiet because this is a very, very calm and quiet neighborhood. I've been out here for maybe 15 minutes checking things out and I don't think one car has passed by. It's a very quiet neighborhood. But the reason why we're here is right there behind me, that's where Professor Jerry Hathaway's house was located. Of course, it was just a set that was built there for the movie. We know that because at the end it breaks apart, the popcorn comes pouring out, the house starts to sink, but that's, at the time that was just a lot and that's where they built the house. Now at the time of filming Real Genius, this neighborhood was definitely not as developed as it is now. Some of these houses were here, a couple of them, but for the most part, this area was pretty empty and open. In the beginning of the movie, this is where Jerry's driving with the guy from the government agency and they're turning onto Jerry's street and he sees one of his neighbors and he covers up the face of the guy driving and he almost crashes. And you can see this house on the corner, but again, pretty covered by trees and shrubbery now. But that fire hydrant right there on the corner, that can be seen in that shot. They're then driving down the street right here towards Jerry's house, but again, this view doesn't really look anything like it did in the movie. Those hills are covered, there's houses on top of them. Very different view. So basically right where this house now sits, this is where Jerry Hathaway's house was. And like I said, at the time it was just an empty lot. So they came out here and they built a fake house. And since they filmed the movie, a real house has been built in its place. I just noticed this house directly across the street and it can be seen in the movie a couple of times. Like when Jerry's coming back from jogging and Chris is standing in front of his house waiting to talk to him. It can also be seen at the end of the movie during the popcorn scene. Now there's also a house on the hill up there behind those trees and it can be seen in the movie when the laser is hitting the house. But like I said, there's now trees covering it and you can't see it at all anymore, but it's definitely still up there. And we can't go into it because it's now, it appears to be part of somebody's backyard, but right here, this was the little drainage ditch that they're hiding out in while they're waiting for the laser to hit Dr. Hathaway's house. And we, you can see right there. That's where they're hiding out, but can't actually get into that ditch anymore. And just try and imagine everybody right here in front of the house, dancing and having a good time eating popcorn while listening to Tears for Fears. And this is pretty much the shot we get at the end of the movie when Professor Hathaway pulls up to the house and sees all the damage they did with the popcorn. He would have pulled up against the curb right there and then he gets out of the car and just kind of stares at the house in disbelief. Did anybody ever notice that in the beginning of the movie, the shuttle pilot is played by skateboarding legend Stacy Peralta? I am established, confirm we are go for arms. So random. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. There was a couple of spots that I really wanted to show, but I just wasn't able to track down the locations. Sometimes we just don't get what we want. Hopefully you remember to pop yourself a big bowl of popcorn oh! and sit back and enjoy this video. If not, there's always next time. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.